Okay, we are officially starting the class. And so, a couple of things to let you know about on how the class is going to run. I'm going to go over the syllabus, going to go over what we're doing here. Also, you may have noticed I just started a recording. Um, all of the class meetings will be recorded and are made available to you. In fact, if you were in the yesterday's class, the recordings are available as well. This is because you guys are all international students and you're all traveling around and half the class isn't actually sitting down right now, uh, which means they're going to be walking in in the next five minutes because I'm very prompt. I'll start at the beginning. And I'm not going to wait for everybody to get here. If I did that, the class would never start. Uh, so I'm going to go forward on my own schedule. Start a little bit later today, but we'll definitely be starting at 9 for the next uh, four weekends. I'm going to see you because uh, we only meet every other weekend. Um, students in between want to like refresh their memory on stuff. And plus, we'll be doing some of the assignments in class today, so you might want to go back and relive the experience over and over and over again. So that's what this recording is about. Um, and the recordings themselves, I'm just going to jump right into it. And um, are on a YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is uh, actually, you can get to it by youtube.com and then it's forward slash BJ Hacker. For some reason, it goes automatically. In fact, you can probably see it right here, hopefully. Uh, J stands for Jill, which is my middle name. Normally, I go by B Hecker. However, that was taken, like, and this was taken like years ago. I've had this site for like years. Uh, anyway, bottom line is I haven't made the playlist yet, but yesterday's playlist is there. And uh, you can see all of yesterday's lectures in here. Uh, there was about, oh, I don't know, about six hours of database class yesterday. It's posted in here under a uh, playlist for uh, database administration. You can also see other stuff in here from like about five years ago, maybe about 2005. Actually, it's more like 10 years at this point. Um, I archive everything uh, when I'm recording it. Um, and you can also find this in uh, Canvas. So if I go to uh, sophia.edu, and uh, I click on the Canvas button here. And uh, I can show you yesterday's class. What happened? Um, let me log in here real quick. Uh, let's see. I log into the Canvas class. go into courses and I go down to well we, I'm going to show you yesterday's class because yesterday's is done and today's just started I don't have any recordings yet uh, but if I go into the business database systems from yesterday and this is for anyone who missed yesterday who is in that class um, in the discussions you'll see in a few minutes once it renders here it is uh, Video. So it says uh, you're in descending order because we started it down here. This is the first video I did, so video introduction to class. You click on it and you'll see the YouTube video comes up directly linked. Okay, and, welcome everyone. Oh, that's to yesterday's the class. class. I'm going to stop this, is... this lecture. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so then if you uh, missed, let's say you came back from lunch and you are really tired because some people were sleeping yesterday after lunch because they were jet lagged. And you missed something very important, you can see. And I try to put here, like, for example, we did the entity relationship diagramming, and then we did the Reese, we Reese the rest of the ERD, and then we did assignment one, and then we did assignment two. So when we go through some of the programming stuff, you're probably not going to get everything the first time I go through it. So you can go through and relive the entire experience, because everything on my computer is being recorded, and everything you're looking at is being recorded, along with my voice. So it's not a highly interactive video, but it does capture the moment for the moment and then uh, allow you to relive it if you want. So I'll be doing the same thing for this class and it'll be in the Canvas class and kind of leads me to the Canvas class here for this class. This is Programming Language Paradigms and what I'm doing right now is going over the class, what's what it's about. Um, if you go into Canvas, which is where you're going to find everything, you'll see the syllabus link here. It's a Word file. And you'll see the weekend dates. We're here today, July 12th, and then we're coming back on the 26th, and then the 9th, and then the 23rd. I kind of sort of like it. It's kind of different, the eight-hour day. And it's not really, I'm not going to have you in the seat for eight hours continuously listening to me, because uh, 
tell you, I can't probably talk for eight hours straight, nor do I even want to. Uh, so instead, uh, we take a 10 minute break every hour, <coughs> which is a standard kind of standard kind of thing to do. We have an uh, hour and a half lunch, um, probably between 12 and 1.30. Um, yesterday our lunch got messed up because of pizza, but uh, you'll have a break in the middle of the day. Um, every hour to an hour and a half, I try to take those 10 minute breaks. Uh, which means after I get done with this first lecture, which is probably going to take me about an hour or so, then we're going to have our first 10-minute break. And then I'm going to start immediately back up. Uh, and then, so if you take longer than that 10-minute, which I don't encourage you to do, you're going to miss out. And if that is the case and you do come walk in late, if you could keep the voices down and the chatter down, because I'll be recording at that time and you're going to mess up my recording. <laughs> so, which means... You won't be able to hear it too well if you're making noise while coming back from lunch, and I've already started the class back up. So if you, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, if you make it back in time, you won't be disturbing anyone either. Uh, so you notice that I do have some loaner computers. I highly encourage you to bring a computer with you. We're going to set the software up first, which is going to be the first thing we're going to do today. And then at that point, we're going to hit right into programming language concepts. This class is called Programming Language Paradigms. You got into this class because if you're brand new, you didn't pass the... We gave you a little little quiz thing that was a... I don't know. It was actually, believe it or not, <coughs> the pass rate was kind of low on it. It was a CS undergrad uh, prerequisite test that is normally done electronically. I just printed it out, essentially, because I didn't want people cheating on computers. And it judges entry level from high school into an undergrad CS program. It's a pretty good indicator that if you didn't score too well on it, that you probably don't have very much of an undergrad level CS background. It's not to say that you don't have an undergrad degree. It just means that it probably isn't in computer science. And if it wasn't in this country, it may not have necessarily been in the same topic areas. There's a lot of computer engineering courses. There's a lot of like degree programs. There's a lot of electrical engineering programs. I'm not saying you don't have an engineering background. I'm just saying if you didn't pass that little quiz thing and you're in this class, you don't have what I would consider a strong CS background. If you think you do and you're just a bad test taker, then come see me. Maybe I can get you into a different class if this class is too boring for you. Some people just signed up for this class because they like Java and they want to learn more about Java. That's fine too. So this class is not really just for people who need a foundational background. It's for everybody <clears throat> because the class is going to be all about Java programming, object-oriented programming, programming in general, how to program, and basic computer science concepts and how to, uh, how to work a compiler what the compilation is doing, how object orientation works, and Java as a base language. Uh, the course could have been taught in C++, and it's often taught in C or C++. I kind of think that Java is actually more popular these days. And so some people taught or took this class because maybe they have a C++ background, but they don't have a Java background. And it, Java is a very popular language, so anyway. Uh, you may have taken it for many reasons. Don't think that it's... Uh, not going to be challenging. It will definitely be a challenging course, um, but I'm going to start very basic. There's a textbook for the course I actually highly recommend. It's called uh, Java How to Program, and it's by Deedle and Deedle. And I'm going to actually Google this for a second here, uh, if I can find my web browser. Here it is. Some of you actually bought the book. Um, it's early objects. Let's see if it's early objects or not early objects. He's got like, and this is the ninth edition, you don't necessarily need this edition. I know that you can get, here's the tenth edition actually, uh, you can get, let's just take a look, you could probably buy this book for about five dollars, ten dollars. Uh, this, the tenth edition here is a hundred and twenty nine dollars. Not quite sure it's worth the investment. Uh, here's the ninth edition down here and uh, this is a, this is it on the website. If you can't find the ninth, don't worry about it. We can get the tenth if you want. The cover's a little different. The book's a little different. We're getting a, a copy of it for the library. 
you might want it, you might not want it. It's up to you. It depends if you want a textbook for the course. Oh, here, look at this. It's a PDF file. <sighs> don't do this at home because I don't, this is not legal. If this actually opens, you know what, I'm not going to open it. Um, however, um, wow. Not encouraging this at all. However, I can't believe someone did that. Anyway. There's no excuse for not having the book, but I don't get it this way. It's un it's unethical. Let's just put it like that. And the author of this book isn't going to make any money off of it this way. Um, and they're probably not going to be able to afford to write newer editions of the book if everyone downloads it and like this. But anyway, let me get off of this because this is really going in the wrong direction. Uh, oops, I have multiple pages of the book open. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, let me go back to the syllabus that was out here. Canvas, canvas, canvas. Here we go. So, <clears throat> the book is readily available. A uh, hard copy of it does not necessarily, it's not really a necessity. Um, the book, a hard copy comes with a, a disc, a DVD. We're not going to use the book for this class for any of the assignments. We're not going to use the disc for any of these assignments. But I will tell you that there's a lot of a lot of value in looking at programming examples. And if I go to the files folder of the class, um, I can see in here that I've got Java programming lectures and object-oriented programming lectures, and uh, there's a lot of resources in the Canvas class. And uh, I'm probably going to use some of these resources, but not all of them, um, while I go through my lecture stuff. You can't teach uh, programming by PowerPoint, so I'm not going to really do much PowerPoint with you. Instead, we're going to bring up stuff and do stuff together. Uh, so if you have a computer and you have it set up, which we're going to do momentarily, then uh, you'll be able to follow along if you do attend the course on our, like you're supposed to and you do the stuff in class. Um, we'll have most of your out-of-class stuff started before you leave. There are a few assignments, and let me go back to the syllabus and show you what I'm talking about. <coughs> there are seven programming assignments, a midterm and a final exam. You're like, what? The, the, the seven assignments are not bad. They are done in class. We're going to do assignment number one and, and number two before the day is out, actually, uh, just like we did yesterday in the, in the database class. Uh, midterm will be a closed book, closed notes kind of thing. And it's basically for me to figure out uh, where everybody's at and uh, what's going on uh, and what I need to stop and start and do more of. Um, it is only worth 30% of your grade, and then 35% of your grade will be on a closed book, closed note, final exam. Won't be very much programming on the midterm. I might ask you to write some programming statements on the final exam. I know on the first day of class we haven't even talked about programming yet. People are freaking out already. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Uh, <clears throat> you'll know. I make it really easy so you'll know what it is you're supposed to be learning. So hopefully you'll be able to learn it, and hopefully you'll score quite nicely. This is not like one of those classes where I'm trying to fail everybody, because <laughs> you guys need this information to be successful in the other classes. So it's kind of like I'm trying to encourage you to experiment, explore programming, <clears throat> um, get out of your comfort zone a little bit with Java, and uh, kind of just absorb it. It's actually better if you don't have any programming experience because if you don't, then you're not clouded with pre-notions of how things are supposed to work. So, yeah. Oh, here come some people. You clear the back door. That's good. All right. So academic dishonesty, uh, part of the syllabus I need to go over. It is very important that nobody cheats and everyone does their own work. If you find an example and I give you an example in class that's not academic dishonesty, if we write half the program in class and you finish it at home, that's not dishonest as well, especially when I tell you that you can do that. Don't have the same assignment turned in by five people. That's wrong. And obviously for cheating in exams and stuff like that, it's something we are really cracking down on. So don't be tempted to cheat in your classes. It will only get you expelled. It will only get you thrown out of, this, out of the program, essentially. All right. Uh, here's the syllabus uh, schedule. 
So I have it broken out by weekend. This is number weekend number one. Uh, today we're doing an overview of Java programming. We're doing the model view controller and the object concept. We're actually going to start and probably finish program one. And then we're going to start and probably finish program number two, but we'll see how far we get. Uh, and then program number one and program number two are not technically due until next, next time I see you, which is going to be in two weeks. So you don't have to, like, oh, my God, it's due today. Nothing's due today. Nothing is due until next time I see you next Sunday. And uh, good for you if you're out here on a Sunday and you have a problem with programming assignments, I teach a Saturday class. You can catch me if you're on campus or close, even if you're not taking anything on Saturday. You can still come by the little classroom where I was yesterday and still ask me questions about this class, which is good. So uh, feel free to catch me. I'm here on the same weekend for on Saturday for another class. So yeah, at your break or whatever, you're having a problem with this class, it's a good time. I don't really have office hours, but it's a really good time to catch me um, if you have a quick quick question. Otherwise, I am, uh, yes? Oh, OK. Um, otherwise, I am uh, here Monday through Friday as well, but some of you guys aren't. So some of you guys are away. So. Uh, email is generally the best way of catching me, by the way. And uh, here's my email address right here. If you use the phone, I never I, well, I like I don't have it turned on. I, I mean, I don't use it, so I mean, text messaging sometimes, but the, the email is the best way of catching me. Uh, questions about the syllabus? Okay. Um, you can click on the. In fact, if you go to the bottom of the syllabus, you see it's all broken out. This is uh, this is next weekend. Nothing is due this weekend. So the next time I see you in two weeks. If we go over assignment number one and assignment number two, that's due. And we'll start it in class this weekend. Now, August 9th, which is a month away or so, this is like the 12th, so this is almost a month away, is when the midterm is going to happen. And then we're going to come back on the 23rd and do four, two more assignments. So there's only one assignment due this week because of the midterm, because uh, you'll probably want to be studying for the midterm. And then at the end, on August 30th, the very last weekend, we're going to have our final, plus these two assignments are going to be due. If you want to work ahead, you can actually finish this class tomorrow or today. You can click on here and you can read the assignments. This is number four I just clicked on, by the way. And if you look at the assignment, you'll see all the instructions in there. Number four is a nice little GUI program. Yeah, you're going to make this by the time the class is over, though. Don't freak out. But uh, it's not bad. This is using Swing and AWT. Uh, so, you know. Each one of them is going to be kind of kind of fun, kind of interesting. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else I need to show you here. Um, I just does anyone get these announcements? Does anyone get the announcement from the class by email? Oh, you do. Okay, it comes out by email, or do you get it? Oh, you get, okay, good, good. I've been. Uh, it's a new system for me. Um, I've been trying out the email features, so and that's good to know. I, I can send out announcements then about stuff before the class starts. So that's good. Uh, if you click on the links on the left for people who are brand new, they're like quick access ways of getting in to the assignments and things. Um, all of the assignments are uploaded and submitted via Canvas, um, especially for this class. I can't really take anything printed out because how am I going to see if it works? Like that, so. All right, uh, let's see. Do we have any questions? Oh, I have a question in the back. Yeah. Uh, you're not able to see the assignments. Uh, let's take a look here. Assignments in here. You don't see the assignments? Uh, it says it's non-public. This says it's non-public? Unpublished. This one's unpublished? Really? Is anyone else? Nobody can see it? No, nobody can see it. Really? Uh, how weird. Uh, is this supposed to be the publish button? Tell me if you can see assignment one now. You can't see the syllabus either? Really? Okay. Uh, let me fix that momentarily, actually. And I'm going to stop the video because uh, unless we have questions, okay, first, do we have any questions about it's published? Do we have any questions about the <coughs> syllabus before? 
I end this section and we'll deal with the canvas issue in a few minutes. No? Okay, good. Well, you can always ask your question later as well.